Why the knee pads? Today, we are gonna continue laying vinyl floor. Now, I'd already laid floor for two days, and I just wanted to make a video to show you how non-easy this is. Manufacturer's video was a little misleading. And here's some tools that you might need. And don't wait till day three to buy this. And I set up a little workstation here and definitely get one of these. The directions for this flooring says that you start in the upper left-hand corner, which is right here. Directions are a little misleading because upper left-hand corner, I start working this way, but they want you working this way. Isn't that the upper right-hand corner then? Regardless, we start here and we work this way. Dog misses his mom. I used a belt line moisture barrier. Easy enough to cut as long as you had sharp razors. Lay this at a 90 degree angle to the floor. And this moisture barrier had a self-sealing, already pre-attached adhesive strip that you could just push it down together and make a real nice seal. With any luck, this will keep out any moisture problems that we ever may encounter. Now, once I already had all the moisture barrier and felt installed, I come back and I use my back saw and I undercut all my jams and anywhere where I want the flooring to slide under so my cuts don't have to be so perfect. I use two pieces of flooring to describe the perfect height for all my doors. This is why I made the video. They say it just goes together at a little angle here, but it never does. They say a little pressure will make it go flat, but the truth is you gotta smack it with a mallet. And then you put it at this angle and just nice and easily supposedly slide it right in and then just kind of do the same thing, but it never does. And you have to smack it with the mallet without breaking the tongue. And when you eventually get it to where you smack it enough, it'll lay down flat on its own. Kind of like, not yet, there. You will hear a click when it finally goes together, but it's actually right, well, actually there. Now we're gonna start on day three, put the piece in backwards to mark it, quarter inch off the wall so it still floats. And then you can simply just score it, break it, and it cuts perfect. Then you have to get that perfect angle and smack it to get it to fit. Shorter cutoff pieces you can't break by hand. So that's why I have the channel locks. I use full pieces as I approach the door. When we get to the door, we're gonna make it two pieces so I can do my scribe cuts much easier. Put the piece in place, make my marks where I need to make all my scribe marks. Use my straight edge to get a sense of how deep I could make those cuts. Transferred everything out with my square and then cut it with the jigsaw. With the piece in place, I mark where it's gonna be when it's all said and done. And that way my cutoff piece, I know where to put it. So where the marks should be on that as well. There has to be enough play in these cuts so that you can move the pieces back and forth and tap it into place. You need to measure to make sure that you're in multiples of four because you can't hem any piece that's less than 10 inches. I lay everything out and then slowly tap. And the first course is by far the hardest. There's nothing to support even though you put the three quarter inch blocks up against the wall but it still flexes too much. And I really had a heck of a time. So getting the first couple of courses is not for the faint of heart. I started working from this direction, but I was having so much problems that I actually came back 
took everything out and worked back in the other direction. And it worked. Still not quite as easy as they make it out to be. So you need the creative director with her trusty assistant to stand on the first couple courses so it just gives enough backing to where you can smack it. Once you get a couple courses on and you're able to kneel on it yourself, it goes a lot faster. Here I start with a full piece, but I staggered my starts with full pieces, half pieces, third pieces, just as long as I had at least 10 inches on the far end. Starting with different lengths just keeps your joints from lining up, and it's a lot more stable. So this is obviously in triple time because you can see the trusty assistant's tail. But this was either day three or day four of laying this stuff. Day four, complete. And now day five, which is in the kitchen, which I only showed putting in this piece. I use another piece to make sure I tap this right back to where the seam needs to be and leave that quarter inch space. Afterwards, we're going to come back with quarter round and hide the gap and all the base will hide everything up against the wall. And the floor will still be able to float. Having an assistant to hand you pieces so you don't have to keep getting up and down is invaluable. And day five or six. This is where we're headed. So you notice the creative director uses proper lifting techniques. The key is to keep a little bit of an angle so you can smack it into place and you finally get done. Here it is, finished product with base that I paid to have installed because my back just couldn't take it anymore. Wide base gives it a real nice, elegant contrast in the kitchen. I've been told that's not a blue wall, it's cloudburst. My takeaway on this job, if you can afford it, pay for it. I don't think I've ever been happier to have a job completed. So we'll see you next, watch those videos. See you next time.